Hi guys, Danny here, and welcome to part 7 of my mod review of Rotary Craft by Reka. In this part, I'll be going over all of the cosmetic and the surveying machines. So, without delay, let's get started. We start off with the ground penetrating radar. The radar is able to read the densities and other properties of the blocks below it and use all that information to draw a cross sectional map. And as you can see from here, we can increase the field of view by increasing how much power we put into the machine, like every other machine in Rotary Craft. Now, if you go here, we can see that the lever is off, and if I right click on the machine, I can only see a one by one area of all the way down to the bedrock layer. The yellow is obviously the sand, the black spaces is all of the air blocks, and it keeps going with all the sand until it reaches the bedrock layer. However, if I was to go here and flick this lever and right click again, now we can see a full view of everything underneath the machine. This is only an area slice, in other words, the machine can only see everything along this line that way which is what we see here again the yellow is the sand the black is the air blocks the red there is the lava and the blue there is water As you can see there's also a black block there which is probably some air blocks way 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 underneath near the bedrock layer I had to create that myself as I'm in a super flat world but you can still see all of the things that I put down. The pink there are all of the different machines that I put down and the grey there is possibly some stone and the brown is probably dirt. And next we have the mob radar. The mob radar can detect mobs in a large radius around it and it doesn't matter if you have blocks surrounding it or in the way it'll still find the mobs and then it'll display the positions on the plane which is this and also if you have a motion tracker which is this device which I'll explain in the next part you can also get a HUD that alerts you of the mob position near you so if I right click now I can see that there are no mobs around me However, if I was to spawn some, like so, right click, and there you go. Now I could put this in my house, and if it was night, I wouldn't have to go outside to see if there was any mobs surrounding it. Also, when I have the motion tracker in my inventory, I can see the mobs from far away. I can see a sort of like a green line through it. Can't see it now, the bats are too far away, but when it does happen you can see it. You can see it through walls as well, which makes it very handy. And going back into the mob radar you can I can see the zombies there, a couple of skeletons. And they're towards the north side, so let's see. North is that way, so the mobs should be somewhere in that direction. Also if you increase the power, you can increase the range. And that is the mob radar. Next we have the cave scanner. The cave scanner works like a laser 3D scanner as it says here. It sends pulses to the ground and can detect the interface between air and other blocks, which it will then render into the world as little dots. The field of view is 16 blocks and you can move it around by right clicking at the cave scanner and if you shift right click you can pull the field of view towards yourself if, you, if I go here you can see that the required power is quite a bit but it is totally worth it and the power input is from any side and uh, you can move the selected region by right clicking the block what that means is if I go here and turn it on you can see this little cube in front of me this cube is my field of vision for looking under the ground and at the moment I can't really see anything but if you look 
at the distance you can see pink dots those are the dots that will help us detect what's underground so all I need to do is right click and you can see my field of view going further the little cube is going further and if I shift right click it'll come towards me the best idea is to have the cube surround you completely so when you look down you can see those little dots and if you see down there you'll see the little blue dots and the blue dots are the interfaces between the air and the sand if I go here and look down you can see a line of those blue dots going down as well that is because if I break this I have a tunnel here and you can see the blue dots outlining the edges of the blocks and the air. If I go in this direction, I can see all of the different blocks and air interfaces. There are, if I go here, I see there's another one here. That is because, let me destroy this block. I have another one here, as you can see there as well. Now, as you can imagine, this is very handy because if I look down there I can see that there is in fact a tunnel leading downwards and if there is also a tunnel leading from way down there to the left as you can see there uh, going this way there 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 and it ends here and if I follow the one from here let's see <laughs> the trick is not to fall inside the hole there you go I can see that there is also the tunnel leading this way and the tunnel is here and then there's a tunnel leading right from here and it ends there and one that leads to the left from there and ends right about there you can probably see it very faintly just there the little blue dots and that's how you use the cave scanner Next we have a machine that I already showed before, which is the aerial camera. With the aerial camera I'm able to get a bird's eye view of the surrounding land, so I'd be able to see basically this without me, you know, having to fly around. To use the camera, first you need to get yourself a CCTV screen, and then you need to pick any three colors to create a color code. I picked yellow, yellow, yellow and have the same in the aerial camera as well and as you can see I don't have any power generation machines connected to the aerial camera to power it you'll need to use one of these things a wine spring I explained the wine spring in a previous part so if you don't know what it is you should check it out and next I go down here and as you can see I have power like so and then if I shift right click on the CCTV screen I can see a bird's eye view exactly what I said of uh, the surrounding area the brown is the wooden fences the pink is the machines the green is the cactus and so on and next we have a very fun machine the fireworks display if you put various ingredients inside of the fireworks display it'll create random fireworks and will launch them automatically you can also give it pre-made fireworks stars and it'll use those as it wishes you can also increase the power input which makes the machine more conservative in using its ingredients and you can get more fireworks out of the same amount of ingredients as you can see here you need not that much power but quite a bit of speed and if you look inside of the fireworks display you can see I have various ingredients needed to create different firework rockets and if I just turn this on the machine will create random fireworks and will set them off so if I just make it night there you go now you can use this machine to create automatic firework shows and as you can see here it'll look beautiful you can also increase the speed and the rockets will shoot out faster but I don't really suggest that because 
this isn't that bad. Any more than that, and the rockets will shoot out so fast that everything will just be too crazy to watch. In fact, let me do just that. So yeah, don't increase the speed too much, or you'll just get this. Let me just fix this. This is fine. And yeah, that is the fireworks display. And next we have the music box. The music box is basically an integrated note block circuit. And you can just program it with various notes and it'll work like multiple note blocks in one block. And if you give it just a redstone signal, it'll just play the notes for one cycle. But if you give it shaft power, which is the rotary graph power, you can have loop music. The loop power is very small, just 1024, and the music box works like so. You can select various tempos, but you have to forgive me first, I'm not very um, musically knowledgeable, but I'm doing my best here. And you can choose various instruments from there. and so on and so on you can also save your music and you can play it again you have various channels where you can save your music you can pick various instruments like I said pick different notes that doesn't even sound nice okay let me go to one and like so and if you just give it some shaft power which I have using this industrial coil just 1024 very small it will keep looping it over and over again now that doesn't sound nice but you know if you if you know your music then you'll be able to create awesome music from this I'll just go to demo This demo music was the thing that was playing at the start, some of you might have caught that. And yeah, it's pretty nice. So yeah, that's the music box. And next we have the projector. The projector, as you can see, is used to output an image from a slide against a wall. The wall has to be 7 blocks wide and 5 blocks tall, and can't let light through, obviously, and there can't be any blocks between the projector and the wall. For example, if I was to put this on here, the image is gone. And similarly, if I was to destroy one of these, the image is also gone. Now what I have inside of the projector to get these images on the wall are these slides. You can make the slides in-game. As you can see, they all use different dyes. And like so. But the one I'm using right now is the custom one, and I think you can only get that through creative mode. And when you do get that, you just have to put a file extension in, a file that you have in your C drive. And I had this saved to my C drive, and there you go, I have this projected on my wall. However, the other images, the other slides that you can get in game let me just show you I can switch between them by stepping on this pressure plate like so and if you saw that, the projector actually switches between the slides in this direction, as you can see from the arrows. So every time I press the pressure plate, the next one comes on, the next one, and the next one, and so on, and so on. And like I said before, you can get these slides from just using different dies with the slides. 
and that is the projector. And next we have the silver iodide cannon. The silver iodide cannon has one simple function. You can use it to control the weather. The cannon has an inbuilt light sensor that will determine the current weather and if it has the necessary item or chemical, it will fire it into the air to change it. It does have a cooldown time and it has to have a clear view of the sky, obviously. So the input power is so. And to get the various weather, you need to put in sawdust for sun, silver iodide for rain, redstone and silver iodide for thunder, and for superstorm, glowstone plus that. Okay, let's see this in action. Let me turn this on. And what did it fire? I have no idea. Let's see. Okay, it fired the silver iodide. And there, it fired the sawdust. As you can see, the rain is turned off. Now, this will keep on going because I have the silver iodide and the sawdust in there. First, it will fire one create rain, then it'll fire the other, stop the rain, then it'll fire this one again to create rain, and so on and so on. And there you go, it's raining again. And it'll keep doing that over and over until I remove one of them. Let me just remove the silver iodide. It's really grey up there. And in a second it'll fire the sawdust after the cooldown time has ended, and the weather will be all sunny again. I did take out the... okay, that's good. And there you go. Fired the sawdust. There you go, it's not raining. It was night so you couldn't see it, so I just changed the time. And that's that. Next we move on to a machine that I had at the very start of my first video. The display screen. The display screen can be used to display text on a holographic screen and you can use it in something like a server welcome message or something like that. It requires a charged wine spring to function and to add text to it just write in a book then right click the machine with the book and the text will just appear. As you can see there I have the wine spring and a message uh, which I have in this book but I have another book here so all I need to do is write something in the book and just sign it and if I right click there you go and it's just that simple as that. All I need to do is right click with the book. I can just go to my other book. Right click. There you go. And if I right click with the other thing. There you go. It's as easy as that. All you need to do is right click with different books. And you can change the message like so. And it's just that simple. And that's it for all of the machines in this part. If you liked the video, please leave a like or subscribe for more Minecraft videos. And as always, thanks for watching.